Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, here is Van Amsen and today we are diving deep into uh, LeetCode daily challenge, count of wallets pickup and delivery uh, option. And we are going to explore not one, not two, but three different methods to solve it. So let's dive in. All right, so the game is as follow. Uh, it say we have an order and each with a pickup and a delivery. And we are going to find all the valid sequence ensuring each delivery for its pickup. So sounds fun, right? But uh, first let's also uh, look at, at uh, constraints. So our N can range between one and 500. So uh, that's why we need to output it as modulo 10 to the power of nine plus uh, seven. So let's look at example. When n is one, this is our base case. And if you have just one order, you have only one sequence. So it's pick up first order and then deliver it. And voila, so uh, it should output one. And when n is two, now you got a multiple option to arrange the pickup and the uh, delivery. So as you can see, uh, we can have uh, different approaches. So uh, n is two, so output is six. And for example, we can have pickup one, pickup two, uh, delivery one, uh, delivery, delivery two. So it's one option, but we can have also uh, mixed. So pickup one, uh, delivery one, pickup two, and then delivery two. So as you can see, uh, yeah, and we can have also uh, for more and total is a six arrangement. So now uh, when we understand uh, the task, let's dive into understanding how we can solve it. So we will start with dynamic programming. So DP. So, okay, uh, let's dive deep into the first method. It's dynamic programming. And the first thing we have to do is uh, initialize a variable called count to one. Uh, but why one, you might ask. Imagine you have a single order, just one. So how many sequence can you make out of it? The answer is one as in example. So you pick up the order and then deliver it. So that's uh, your only option. So count starts off as one to capture this base case. And this is our uh, foundation uh, and the core stone uh, upon which we uh, will build entire uh, solution. So uh, let me uh, implement it. So we will also have uh, Modulo as our helper. And then, uh, yeah, count one and four i in range two to n plus one, count equal count times two times i minus one times i modulo, modulo and return uh, count. So really simple uh, implementation. Uh, so let's understand. So we got our base case down and what's next? Iteration. So we will iterate from two up to n, but why uh, start at two? Because we have already got the base case uh, for n equals one covered. And uh, let's get into the uh, our transition function. So for each order i, you have two action, a pickup and a delivery. And in total for i order, you have two i actions. So we need to figure out where to place uh, this in the sequence. So uh, here is the kicker. When you add a new pickup for the uh, it order, you have two i minus one places to put it. Y minus one, well, uh, you got to save a spot for its uh, corresponding delivery, right? So for the delivery, uh, you have uh, I option because it can go anywhere after its uh, corresponding uh, pickup. And uh, the update rule here is uh, our main part. Uh, so it's count equal count times two I uh, minus one times I. And this formula uh, 
consider all the new possibility, including uh, by the i uh, order. And uh, yeah, and so after this, uh, we simply return our calculated uh, count variable. Uh, so now let's uh, test our first implementation. It's yeah, all good for uh, test cases to six. So let's submit it for unsynthesis cases to verify it's working. So yeah, it's working. It took uh, 44 milliseconds. I think I have even faster. We can uh, yeah, rerun it. So as you can see now in the second run, we have a runtime of 36 milliseconds beating 82%. All good. So uh, let's go to description. Uh, we can yeah, uh, erase it. And there we have it, dynamic programming. Uh, elegant uh, Python function. So now uh, recursion with memoization. So uh, let's start with also uh, placing uh, our helper. And also what we will need is our memo. Okay, so now uh, let's shift to memoization in recursion. So first thing first, we create a memoization dictionary. And this isn't just any dictionary. It's our secret a vault that store answer to sub problems. So we don't have to solve them over and over again. Uh, so, and the base case uh, is like the root of our tree. So uh, for n equals one. So how many sequence can we have? Just one. So pick up and deliver it. And that's it. So we set that uh, uh, as our uh, base case. So yeah, let's do this. If n equals one, return one. Yeah, and then we have a recursive call. Uh, so now comes the head of our method, uh, so recursion. But we are doing a recursion with a twist. So before making a recursion call, we pick into our memo dictionary, and if already has the answer, boom, we take it. So no more calculation. So it's quite optimal. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's implement it as well. So if uh, n solve memo, and then return memo n, and now count will be solve count order n minus one times two times n minus one times n modulo uh, mod. So, and uh, of course, if the answer isn't in memo, we calculate it just like we did in the dynamic programming method. So same logic, but here is the crucial part. We store this newly calculated answer in our memo. Uh, so for future use, so we are using uh, it. Uh, yeah, so, so self memo and will be uh, count. And uh, final step, you can guess this return uh, count. Okay, so this is our implementation. Uh, let's run it to verify it's working for, yeah, for uh, our memorization and, yeah. And recursion memo, uh, so count orders, and it's uh, filled with our uh, answer. And for the initial n that we uh, started with uh, memo n, uh, we have a final uh, answer. So uh, let's run it or submit it. Yeah. So as you can see, also past uh, unsynthesis cases, uh, 35 milliseconds with runtime uh, and yeah, beating 23 with respect to memory. So with respect to memory, maybe not so fast. So let's look at the description. So yeah, self memo, we pick a uh, account and uh, yeah, return count. Okay, all good. So let's reset it one more time. And yeah, so I could uh, probably not reset everything. So mod. Okay, so this is our uh, yeah, modulo helper. And last but not least, mathematical approach. So uh, Math is a secret tunnel that takes your 
directly to the treasure. So our final uh, answer. So uh, for this method, we will uh, use combinatorial math and first we calculate 2n power and also 2 uh, to the power of n. So 2n uh, factorial and 2 power f. And so let's implement it. So 2n factor, so factorial 2 times n modulo and 2 power n will be power n mod. And now the last part, so return 2 n factorial times power 2 power n minus 1 mod mod. So uh, notice we are using the uh, modular operation to keep our number from uh, exploding. So always a good uh, practice. And finally, we use this uh, to directly find the number of uh, valid uh, sequences. So just, uh, yeah, this a formula uh, 2 n factorial uh, times power of 2 power n minus 1 uh, and model. Uh, so let's uh, run it and see if it's working. Yeah, so uh, all good. So we can also yeah submit it just to have a look. So it took forty four milliseconds, but I think uh, like test cases sometimes differ. Yeah, as you can see, uh, just by rerunning it, uh, we beat even yeah ninety two percent with respect to memory. But uh, those are not a significant uh, changes. So yeah, our last implementation and. Uh, so it's power and minus one uh, of mod. So there you have it. We have uh, solved it and uh, with different three approaches. Uh, so three uh, approaches to tackle a single problem. So I hope you found this session uh, as thrilling as I did. But wait, there is more. Uh, in the description, you can find the source code for all three approaches in different languages like uh, Go, Rust, uh, and much more. So uh, check it uh, if Python is not your core language. And if you like this video, smash the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting coding adventure, machine learning, uh, tutorials, challenges, and uh, much more programming and tech related. And yeah, so uh, see you next time. Keep practicing, stay motivated, and Happy coding.